produces carbon dioxide gas. So that is also a waste. Getting my point now? Also, yes, we humans and most of the animals that we see around us, they are excre the systems that is present in their body is very advanced. The system in their body to get rid of the waste is very advanced. Like we have a kidney, we have urinary bladder, urethra, ureter is there. Like have a look at just this image over here. Sir? Yes. Uh, today my teacher said that uh, to write all the adaptations like from like only plants. Like mm -hmm. in the exam, the only plants are coming. Okay, okay. No animals and all. So my teacher told that to write mm -hmm. all the adaptations like mountain region and all. Mm -hmm. So I wrote from the the one which I uh, wrote in that notebook, right? That one only I wrote. So, okay, okay, good. So what did your teacher told? Sir, today only she told. So like, tomorrow I'm gonna. Oh, okay. Tell it. Sure. Okay, okay, good, good. So over here, what do you guys see? Like we humans have a kidney. We have this bag-like structure which stores the urine for some time now. The urine in yes, our body yes, gets sir. stored here. Okay, now when it is full, so then we have to get rid of the urine. When it is full with the urine, okay. So yes. our, our, the system, which the, the system uh, which is present in our body is kind of advanced. It's a very advanced system, right now. But not all yes, the sir. organisms have such advanced systems to excrete the waste product produced in the body. Consider the case of the plants. Plants do not have kidneys or urinary bladder or ureters. Yeah. Not like that, no. So they will be exchanging or they will be releasing the waste produced in their body in certain manners, like plants will be producing like we know that plants produce waste products in the form of two gases namely oxygen during photosynthesis okay. yes and carbon dioxide during respiration all of you would be aware of the process of photosynthesis like in the process of photosynthesis Khadijat, what we know that plants take in the carbon dioxide gas from the atmosphere from the air they take carbon dioxide in short i'm writing it is as co2 Okay, no? so this is yes, carbon sir. dioxide gas from the roots plants take in water. Plants take in water. So they are taking in water and carbon dioxide and in the presence of the sunlight, they carry out a chemical process in which glucose and glucose and oxygen is produced. What is basically happening? Carbon dioxide gas. Right now, we are learning about photosynthesis. Okay, now we are learning about photosynthesis. Why we are learning about this? Because in photosynthesis, a waste product is produced. Okay, now, although it is a waste product for the plant, but for it is, for us, it is important. See what is happening? Carbon dioxide reacts with water in the presence of sunlight and all this process happens in the kitchen of the plant. What is the kitchen of the plant? Basically leaves. This is happening in the leaves. And as a result, we get glucose plus oxygen. So see, the only thing that is essential for the plant right now in the process of photosynthesis will be glucose that it prepares. Oxygen is a waste material for it. Oxygen is a waste material for it. So it will get rid of that oxygen. So how is it going to get rid of it? So there are some very tiny pores present on the surface of the leaves. Those pores, do you guys know about the name of that pore? What do we call them as? Call them as stomata. S-T-O-M-A-T-A. Getting the both of you? Yes, sir. So via the stomata, these oxygen gas will come out. It will be released via here. So oxygen comes out from these pores. So this is the way how the plants get rid of the oxygen gas, right? Via special structures called as stomata. That's one thing. Now also we know that plants, plants have to do respiration also. 
Khadija, what did I told you guys about respiration? What is respiration? Sir, the breakdown of food. Breakdown of the food, na? Why breakdown of food is done? Sir, um, sir, can you repeat? Why breakdown of food is important? Why it happens? Why is it important? Simple enough no? to obtain energy. And with that energy, we are able to carry out our different functions, day-to-day -day life activities. Right, Khadija? Like, yes, sir. If, 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 say, if I were not to eat food for 24 hours, let's say I stop eating the food for next 24 hours, so I will fe feel weakness. Why? Because energy is not produced in my body. Getting it, no? So in respiration, while, by the way, the plants also require energy to carry out its function now? Yes, sir. Right? Yes, sir. Good. So they will also be breaking down the food. So in the respiration, while they will be breaking down the food, so food will be reacting with oxygen. Like the oxygen will break down that food. So food plus oxygen, that will give the energy to the plant. Apart from energy, carbon dioxide gas will also be released. So the plant will get rid of that carbon dioxide gas. How? It will also get rid of that carbon dioxide via that pore called as stomata. Hope it should be clear to both Sir, of you. Uh, carbon dioxide, uh, like carbon dioxide, short form is CO2, right? Yeah. In short, it is written as CO2. Okay. No? okay. Uh, two, 2 is written slightly lower, uh, low, uh, lower to the O. Okay. No? Like it is written in this manner, C, capital C, small o, and 2 is written like this. Sir, I thought it, would, it was written, uh, the 2 will be written up. No, no, no. It is written slightly below to o. Okay, no? <laughs> okay. So, two things we have learned. We humans and most of the animals have a very complex system of getting rid of the waste. Like we have kidney, ureter, urinary bladder, etc. are there right now. While the plants have a very simple structure called as stomata, why which they get rid of the gaseous waste. These are gases right now. So organisms like animals have advanced and specialized system for excretion, but plants lacks a well-developed excretory system like that in animals, and they do not have a special organs for excretion. Thus, Excretion in plant is not very complex. It is not very much complicated. Rather, it is very simple. Okay. Now, there are other waste also produced in the body of the plant. No? Like many of you might have seen such structures if you happen to visit to forest or some like national parks or okay. like that. Do you guys know what this is? Yes, sir. Sir, that is the rubber rubber tree no yeah Good. So actually that is latex we're gonna using which rubbers yes, rubbers are made out of this rubbers, rubbers are, made. are made out of latex you know what this is this is raisin this is raisin getting it and this raisin has also got several uses like it is used in preparation of some yeah. medicines also yeah I saw that uh, I saw that raisin somewhere, like mm -hmm. uh, it was looking like a honey, and I was like removing it from the tree. Okay, but uh, it will be kind of a sticky, and it would be hard actually. Yes. Right. Very now. hard. Wow. Very hard. Okay, no. Hmm. So actually, these are some of the waste that is produced in the body of the plant, and these are the way way how this is a way how they will be getting rid of it. So gaseous waste pair oxygen and carbon dioxide. And they will get getting rid of that via the stomata on the leaves. Now. But apart from that, yes. plants produces other waste also. Right now, like latex, resin, and they will be getting rid of it, uh, rid of those waste from the bark of the stem. You guys know now what but, is the bark? Uh, mm -hmm. Resin is used for what? Re resin has some medicinal uses. Okay, no? okay. Re resin is used for so many uh, purposes. Okay, now like one of the uses, it is used in uh, medicinal, uh, making certain medicines also. Getting it, no? So that is the thing about it. Yes, sir. 
i think apart from using it as a medicine uh, like uh, it can be used for certain drawings also it is used for drawing also some of the resins are used in flavoring material also like it can be used to uh, it is add in certain food items also getting it is yes. in fact perfumes are made out of the resins incense sticks can be made out of it there are so many uses of it also you know earlier like earlier when gold was not discovered no so how the women in the tribes would be decorating themselves so they will be making jewelry out of these resins they will make jewelry using these resins because the resins are actually uh, when you see the resins now if you have to look close enough they are very um, br uh, brilliant in color okay now they are very brilliant uh, some and yellow uh, orange is color or some exactly okay now like have a look at this like after some time now this resin becomes very hard this becomes very hard so they yes, were it can be used to make jewelry like people used to make jewelry out of this see the one that you see over here no see this is this is the thing i am talking about and you can oh. see like how the light will be reflecting from it yes sir see kadisha and halima okay no sir, the second picture is the second mm -hmm. picture the but, second picture here so yeah. it can be given a particular shape it can be made in the form of beads and it can be used like this if you women should be like so many designs are there so we can make give them particular shape and then it can be used as a jewelry in fact it was used as a jewelry in the ancient times it was used as a jewelry yes. by the women they used to wear jewelry out of this anyways so talking about excretion in plants we did learn about that in the respiration and photosynthesis they will be producing lots of waste like carbon dioxide and oxygen will be produced right apart from that waste like latex and resin is also produced also you would have seen such structures might you might have seen or you might have seen these structures also so the gaseous waste can occur via the, the gaseous waste can be lost or can be released via these special structures also and these structures what do we call them as they are called as lenticels what l e n t i c e l s okay now okay sir. getting it done so, so the thing is now like sir uh, these the plant... they, they are uh, gaseous waste right yeah gaseous waste no no gas is not gaseous waste these are the structures present on the uh, present on the stem this is a stem and on this stem these structures are present these are basically kind of openings kind of pore pore you guys understand what is a pore p o r e pore is basically considered as a it's basically a small hole you can think of it like a small hole so we know that from the leaves now from the leaves uh via the stomata gaseous waste will be lost okay now but how about the stems so will the stem also be helping in getting rid of the gaseous waste yes sir so yes the stems will also From be helping lenticels exactly lenticels what are they they are small holes basically pores present on the surface of the stems it's not found in all the stems but in some plants it can be present so that is the thing okay so you guys define excretion one by one both of you define excretion when then we are going to do this question yes sir excretion is the waste uh, to get rid of excretion is the waste which we get rid of rid of what Mm -hmm. Excretion is the way of getting rid of the toxic and waste substances produced in our body. Getting it? Yes. Sir. Okay, Gadija, you also try defining it. Yes, Gadija. Yes. Sir. <laughs> Define this. Also, meanwhile, uh, Halima, look at the question. Yes. 
So excretion, what is it? Moments ago, I have defined it. We just have to repeat that. Yes, excretion is the way of getting rid of waste products. Way of the it's the way of getting rid of toxic and waste substances produced in our body. How the plants will be getting rid of it, Halima? How the plants get rid of the toxic waste and what are the by, by the what are the waste produced in the body of the plant also? Sir, plants get rid of waste by lexus and the by stomata by stomata. Okay, now they get rid of the waste by stomata, right? Yeah. And why the lenticels also? Okay, now Kadijat, why the lenticels also? Okay. Yeah. What are the waste produced in the body of the plant, Kadijat? You also turn your camera on in the class. What are the waste produced in their body? Sir, uh, hmm. latex and resin. Uh, latex is produced, resin is produced. Apart from that, carbon dioxide and oxygen uh, is and also oxygen. produced in the body. Okay, but in the case of Sir, we humans, uh, in mm -hmm. in the like, uh, they take in uh, carbon dioxide, right? Yeah, they take in carbon dioxide. So, but like the waste. How can that that see, be the waste? See, the thing is now in the process of photosynthesis, they are taking in carbon dioxide, but they release oxygen. The oxygen that is produced in this process now that becomes a waste material, so they will be releasing this oxygen gas. But in the process of respiration, the plants will be taking in oxygen from the atmosphere, but then carbon dioxide is pr produced in that process, and that is the waste product. So in that case, it becomes the waste. Okay, in that context. Okay. Okay, both of you answer these these questions. Which of the following is an incorrect statement about excretion? Sir, uh, the D one secretion is one method of excretion. No, you have to you have to answer the incorrect statement. Now, which one of them is false? Secretion is one of the method of uh, excretion. Okay, no? Like these plants are secreting the latex. They are secreting the latex from the body. Oh. So it is one of the method. No? Read the other options. Read the other options. Sir, this even excretion is the process of only getting rid of excess water. Okay, what about Kadichat? Uh, the C1. C1, no? Exactly. So it's not the method of only getting rid of excess water, but there are lots of other waste also that is produced in the body. Okay. Then there's yeah. one more thing to be discussed. Like interdependence of organism also is one of the characteristics of the living organism. So, so for... Like the food hmm. chain. Exactly. We can understand it in that context. Exactly. Okay. No? So, so far, we had learned the following things. Before we go to that, we had learned that organism needs food. Food gives organism the energy needed for them to grow and, the, and sustain the different life process. Right now, growth is also one of the, one of the characteristics. Organism would be breathing. Different organism would be breathing via different parts different parts of the body now like for example talking about the earthworms so how does the earthworm breathe earthworms will be breathing via the skin now they breathe via the skin yes, fishes what organ do they use to breathe they use the fishes the gills gills now they use the gills yes right and how the plants will be taking in oxygen via the? By the stomata. Why the stomata? They will be taking in carbon dioxide gas and releasing oxygen. Getting it done? That is one thing. Yes. Then we learned that plants would be responding to the stimuli also. So they will learn that stimuli basically the changes in our surrounding yes. that makes us respond. Right now. That makes us respond. Like you would have seen that cockroaches would be running away from extreme light. If you were to 
project a torch light on the cockroach, it will run away into the dark. Have you done that? Or you'd have observed that. So that's why cockroaches would be found in dark places, not in light places, because it responds to light by uh, running away from the extreme light. Right now, we have some other examples where the branches of the tree would be mov uh, moving in the direction of the incoming sunlight. We have the example of mimosa plant also. Mimosa also called as touch me not plant. Right now, so touch its leaves will be closing or folding when someone touches it. That is one thing. Talking about reproduction also, we learned that reproduction would be that animals would be producing their young ones, young, young ones, ones, either through the egg or either will be giving birth directly. Okay, no? While new plants will also be participating in reproduction with the help of the seeds. Right now, through the seeds, new plants are produced. Getting it now? But there are some plants that can be produced other than the seeds also. You know, like you can take a potato. Potato. Potato has structures like these. These are called as eye of the potato. Okay, yes, no? uh, and you were to cut, if you were to, I were to cut it into three different parts now. From each different part, from each part, a plant will arise. So am I using a seed here? Am I using a seed here? No. To... No. 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 So basically, I'm using the potato here. Potato, excellent. Getting it up. Also, pot potato, you know, potato, is it a root or is it a stem? Sir, it's a root. No. It's a root. No, no. We confuse it for a root, but it's a modified stem, actually. Potato is a modified stem, not a normal stem, but a modified stem. Okay. Getting it? You will be learning Sir, about but it, it later. Grows under the huh, it grows under the under the soil. That is correct. Okay, no. But the thing but is that still, uh, it is still a modified stem. Huh, it is still a stem, because what we know now that stems their function is to provide support to the plant and uh, in uh, like all the branches and flowers they hung onto the stem, right? It's like the pillar of the plant. Stems also, uh, in the stem now, water movement of the water and the food takes place via the stem. But here, this potato, although, uh, but here, what we are seeing that the main function of the stem is to allow the movement of water and food and to provide support to the plant. But here, instead of doing that function, it is storing the food. It is storing the food. So that's why it is called as modified stem. Okay, no? Anyways, the main thing what I wanted to say is that like some of the plants, like most of the plants will be reproducing through the seeds. Right? The new plants will be going growing through the seeds. But some plants can grow without a, without the seeds also. Getting it? Or you'd have seen like the rose can be grown without the seeds. You, you just take a rose plant, cut it, from, cut the stem of the rose plant and then plant it in the soil. A new rose plant will grow. That is one thing. There was one more thing which we are going to discuss that, was about the interdependence of organism. Yes, Halima. Yes. Yes, I'm hearing. Sir, that's why uh, in the on the potato there is some like uh, some roots present in there, right? No, it's not the roots that are present actually. Like this is a potato. These are the structures called as eye if the potato is left in moisture like if some amount of moisture is there or just let us sow it in the soil bury it in the soil okay bury it in, under the soil so sometime later on small structures like this will start to appear from here this is called as bird what do we call them as bud bird and later on Plants will start to grow out of these birds. New potato plants will start to grow out of this. Hope you ha have yes. understood this. Okay, now, although in later classes we'll be learning about it in, in very detail. Okay, now there's a chapter in class seven by the name of reproduction in plants. There you will learn about that in detail. Okay, now. So right now we are going to learn about interdependence in the organisms. Okay, now how organism will be interdependent. Getting it. So talking Sir, about the, uh, written, uh, write. I will give the time to write. 
uh, the different things okay now okay. so talking about interdependence like basically interdependence of the organism is based upon this idea that different species of organisms like different kind of organisms would be relying upon each other to survive right now to survive and meet their requirement for food for shelter for water for air and for space like for example take the case of let me just define this um, by the way let me just define this so interdependence of organisms is based Sir? yes kadijat this one you should write in notebook yeah we can write down oh. this so interdependence of organism is based on the idea by the way you guys clear out this thing to me you guys had previously noted down this much or not you had noted all these characteristics or not sir if, if not you will be writing down this first uh, sir Mm -hmm. yeah. so if you haven't first write this thing these things okay oh. i think you guys would, uh, might not have written this we are feeling road uh, so write down these following points starting from here till here write down it quickly <clears throat> And Halima, when your exam is going to start? October the. October. Okay, okay, October. Yes. Okay. <clears throat> Also, Kadija, you had no, like as I was going through assignment. See, you have to upload answers of only the assigned questions. No need to answer all the questions in the given PDF. Okay, Kadija. Sorry, sir, I didn't understand. Uh -huh. No worries, no issue in that. Okay, no? like the question numbers are kind of mentioned over there. Which questions have to be answered? No worries. Okay, sir. Some some questions there will be long answers, so I should write in not that so. Uh -huh. Like some of the questions, the answers are going to be long, so for that purpose, like you have to answer them accordingly. Okay, sir. And Halima, what happened to you? You haven't been um, uploading your assignments. Sir, I was doing yesterday the animal habitat, but I, I didn't uh, upload it. I'll upload it. Okay, okay. And guys, what's going on in the school? Which chapter is being taught in the school? Sir, in my school, uh, there is adaptation is going on. Okay, that is going on. Okay. Kadichat, what about you? Which chapter is going on in your school, Kadijat? Yes, sir. In my school, uh, turning to our plants. Okay. Basically, the chapter yes, getting to know plants. Yes, sir. Okay, okay. We are writing, define the following. You're writing? We are going to write. Today we write. Today we wrote. Uh, only one defined the following. Okay. Okay. Sir, I'm done. Done. Okay. What about you? Yes, sir. I done. Done. Good. So talking about the interdependence, the basic idea is now 
like for different organisms to survive in nature they have to depend upon one another okay na so the interdependence of organism give the title topic interdependence of organism so interdependence of organism is based on the idea that different organisms different organisms have to rely rely means depend okay now have to rely on each other yes. each other to survive and meet their Sir? needs yes your voice is breaking is my voice breaking now now also no sir sir a bit okay just let me adjust it. is it better now okay so interdependences of organism yes, is based on the idea that different organisms have to rely on each other to survive and meet their needs for need for what so so uh, their needs for food uh, water they need shelter they need air and some space to live okay we are going to look at some special cases like take the case of plant and animal plants and animals we have a example where these two will be depending upon one another for example we know the plants have to depend upon the insects for pollination right a plant yes. over here it has to depend upon the insect for pollination now getting it guys like there's an yes, insect sir. over here like take the example yes, of a butterfly for example so that there's a butterfly so the butterfly will be sitting upon this flower and then it will go on to another flower it will sit on the another flower let us say this is another flower over which it is going to sit so what we know about the process of pollination na no? in pro pollination will be basically helping in the fertilization of the flower pollination will be helping in fertilization of the flower so there basically what happens no? what happens in pollination is that the flowers are fertilized basically so here what will happen you would have seen like some colorful tiny grain like structures you might have observed this in the flower like if you were to look at the hibiscus flower you know about the hibiscus flower there are some golden grain like structures sand like structures in the in the middle of the flower getting it what i'm trying to say if you were to open look at the middle of the flower na no, there will be some small structures just let me show an image look over here this one and look at these two Sir. images with the help of this will uh, you'll be understanding this better so what you see over here a honey bee is sitting on this flower and see so these are the pollen grain these are basically the these contains pollen grain in them so what do they contain they contain pollen grain getting it both of you halima okay halima isn't here just one minute wait her be back then we're going to continue uh, so what we are seeing here now yes halima see what we are seeing here as a butterfly or any insect will be sitting on the flower so there are so many tiny structures like these they will be getting sticked to the body or to the wing of the insect So let's say this butterfly or this honey bee sat on this flower then next time it will be sitting on the another flower so as it will be going to another flower now so let's say over here the anther got i mean to say the pollen grains is stick to the body the pollen grains attached to the body of the butterfly for example yes uh, the 
the honey uh, honey we have some tiny heads that can be stick exactly uh, mm -hmm. very good so the pollen grains will be getting a stick to their tiny hairs also very good so it will be sticking to their tiny hairs and as the butterfly or the honey bee will be sitting on the another flower no so those pollen grains will be transferred let's say this is a pollen grain grain it gets transferred to the another flower with the help of this butterfly or some other insect and in this case we say that pollination is done pollination is done basically the transfer of the pollen grain has taken train taken place from one flower to another flower so how does this help this basically helps in the production of the fruit like fruits are not formed until the uh, until the flower will be pollinated usually getting it now so this is the working of the plant and animal together where we get to see that the pollen grains are being transferred with the help of this insect so plants depend on animals for pollination and how is this insect dependent upon the plant as we know that the flowers secretes a very juicy liquid and it has a fruity smell called as nectar so nectar is the food of the honey bee or in, or the butterfly or any other insects so in turn in turn it gets the nectar from the flower so both of them are depending on each other now the plant is depending upon the insect for pollination while the insect is depending upon the plant for the nectar or the food got this both of you yes sir Yes. Sir. So in this, we write down that plants. In the bracket, we will write down flowers. Depend on insects for pollination, and insects depends on flowers. for food so both of them are interdependent on one another that is one thing furthermore we see dependence upon organisms in the case of food chain also in the case of food chain also so we know that like some plant animals would be eating the plants directly and those animals in return will be getting eaten by other animals furthermore they will be getting eaten by some or, or some other animals right now so food chain is also one another way in which the interdependence upon organism is observed getting it so write down this much and then we are going to learn about the food chain done done sir okay kadija yes. you also last one last okay okay i suppose pollination is clear to both of you why pollination is important why what it is basically it's the transfer of the pollen grains from one flower like you can see like some very tiny structures you can observe here okay no yes. the transfer of the pollen grain from one flower to another is called as pollination so in this Sorry. insect done so insect will be helping okay sir uh, the pollen grain is like uh, that big that the pollen grain is like that big no it's not that big actually these are found inside these structures the pollen grains okay. are actually found inside these structures actually okay now okay. they, they are very small uh, so the next thing is they are like uh, a bit sand see sand. Actually, actually the thing is no pollen grains are no very small and the thing is that usually the the pollen grains will not be visible usually getting it what i'm trying to say i'm saying that you usually you cannot see it with the with the bare eyes okay now but in some situations you can see it getting it so because they are they are usually not visible to our bare eyes because so they are so small okay now they are so small that they are many times are not visible although they can vary in shape and size they can vary in shape and size so actually the thing is na guys 
this structure that you have seen here now this structure we call this as anther and inside the anther pollen grains are found inside the anther pollen grains are found just have a quick look at this image that will give you an idea of really how small the pollen grains are how small the pollen grains are look at a microscopic image of the pollen grain here so the images that you see over here what does it shows you it shows you a microscopic image of the pollen grains so you can see these are very tiny this is a pollen grain viewed under a microscope getting now kadicha and halima yes sir yes all these are the pollen grains so it is viewed under a microscope so they are very small but they are enclosed in these structures okay so main thing is that both them both the plants and animals are dependent on one another furthermore we know that in the case of food chain also different organisms are dependent upon one another like for example there is a plant over here sir all the time eaten. the food chain uh, will be starting from the plant exactly yeah it will be starting from plant only because the plants are the primary producers they can only yes. only they can prepare their own food yes sir using the sun's energy they will be preparing the food furthermore yes, the herbivore might be eaten by the omnivores the omnivores we know that organism that will be eating both flesh and plant and plant products yes the omnivores can be herbivore and omnivores both can be then eaten by a carnivore carnivore if if all of them dies like carnivore herbivore omnivores or carnivores when they die so their dead body will be eaten by they the scavengers yes scavengers like the vultures right vulture and hyena vultures are their hyenas are they good they will be eating the dead body of these animals yes. okay but when all of them will be dying this dies this dies all of them die even the scavengers when they will be dying so their body will be eaten by the microorganisms uh, the micro decomposers decompose. like the Decom different kind mm -hmm. of microorganism will be there in it and worms will also be counted in this worms yeah okay now so yes. in this food chain what we are seeing that different organisms are dependent upon one another for food although they are getting being um, being killed by the other animal but here they are dependent getting it now so that is one more dependence among the living yeah. organisms right now also yeah. this interdependence is essential for maintaining balance in nature okay now all the components of the nature are dependent upon one another and all of them must be working together in order to have a proper life right now so that's all about the interdependent upon the organisms so if there's any confusion in this further please let me any questions sir uh, you guys? this can also happen in the water also right obviously like food chain will be uh, uh, we can observe this on the land in the water body as well like in the water body there are some alga like kelps are there like they are very long alga are called as kelp yes. there are some aquatic plants also those aquatic plants will be eaten by the tiny fishes it will be eaten by the tiny fishes will be eating them other organisms like phytoplanktons will be eating them and these tiny fishes in return will be then being eaten by the bigger fishes now yes and when all of them will be dying so their body will be then become eaten by the decomposers yes so food chain can be observed there also right now yes so that is yeah. the thing. so hope this okay. much is clear if you guys have any confusions in this please let me know all right now so here basically we have missed the chapter okay now by the way just write the definition for the food chain okay now like what a food chain is so you'll be writing the definition as follows give the topic food chain and in this write that that food chain 
it's a it is a uh, it, it shows basically write down that it shows the flow of energy from one organism one organisms to another in a linear fashion okay now in a linear network i can say linear here re refers to a straight line so in a straight straight line the flow of energy is taking place here so what energy you say like basically the they are eating the uh, eating the animals plants are being eaten here now why we're talking about the flow of energy here because the sun the plants have taken the sunlight the plants have taken energy from the sun sun's light by eating the plant herbivores are getting energy by eating the or herbivores omnivores are getting energy by eating the omnivores carnivores are getting the energy Carnival. like this and by eating all of them when they will be dying the decomposers are getting energy so basically a flow of energy is taking place here now from one organism to another yes. in a linear manner in a linear network yes sir okay two yeah. letter ones done sir uh, should we draw the, the this thing you can just draw this one the first one okay okay sir Do let me know once it be done. Then we're going to do some questions. You okay, know. Done. <clears throat> yes. Okay. Halima, what about you? You also done? Sir, one minute. Okay, okay. Okay, meanwhile, Khadija, you define to me that um, what do you mean by habitat? Certain. Okay. Just define habitat. What is an habitat? What is a habitat? Yes? Sir, uh, mm -hmm. a habitat is the way, like, Mm -hmm. the ability uh, like uh, you are going to define adaptation then you have to define uh, habitat yes basically habitat is nothing but the natural home or the environment for any organism from where it will be getting its food water shelter that is what a habitat it is now. So it's a natural environment where an organism will be living. And from that natural environment, all its requirement will be met. It will be getting the food, shelter, water, air, and a space to live. And different organisms have different habitat. Like habitat of a camel is a desert. Habitat of the frog is fresh water. Habitat of the fishes is water. Got this now? So it's yes. in simple term, it's a place where an organism lives and it has to be a natural place. Like if you were to catch a wild cat and if you were to forcefully keep it in your room in your home, so it will not be its habitat now. Yes, it will eventually die. Right now. Eventually will die or eventually will run away. Okay, anyways, let's do the yes. questions. So Khadija. Answer the first question, Halima. You answer the second question of question number one. Yes, sir. Hmm. 
Yeah, start quickly. We have few minutes left. Let's see how many we can do. The surroundings where organisms live is called. Sir, should I answer? No, Kadisha will be answering. You answer the next one. Ponds and lakes are examples of. I suppose these questions are not really that difficult. Guys, am I not visible or audible in the class? Say you are. Uh -huh. So start answering then. First of all, both of you turn your cameras on in the class and answer the questions now. Ponds and lakes, these are examples of what kind of habitat? Are they terrestrial Sir, habitat? Aquatic. aquatic habitat, no? Or more specifically, freshwater habitat? Yes, sir. Good. The first question. It's a very basic question. Moments ago, we were dis uh, discussing the same thing, Kadijat. The surroundings where organisms live is called as. What do we call that? Halima, you answer question number C. Sir, uh, air, soil, and water are dash components. Um, sir, uh, a Abiotic. Exactly. So they are abiotic component. Khadija, I think you are not there in the class. So the class is still going on. The surrounding weird living organism organism live is called as what do we call that, Halima? Uh, adaptation. How can it be adaptation? Uh, 